1,800-year-old woman statue. Archaeologists in the Turkish province of Izmir have unearthed a statue of a woman, estimated to be 1,800 years old. The ministry noted that the statue was found in the Torbeli district on the site where the ancient city of Metropolis was previously located. At the same time, excavations have been underway in this area for several years, which should continue. In July 2020, archaeologists discovered a 1,700-year-old statue of a woman from the Hellenistic period in the ancient city of Perge, now part of the Turkish province of Antalya. It was noted that the statue consists of two parts, a broken-off head and a torso. Ruins of the largest church in the medieval Nubia Polish archaeologists have discovered the ruins of a church that by all indications is the largest church in medieval Nubia. The ruins of the church were discovered in the city of Dongo. Archaeological excavations have been conducted there since 1965, but after some time they were suspended. Only in 2018, with a grant from the European Research Council, they were continued again. Since the beginning of the excavation, archaeologists have discovered many different artifacts, which were transferred to the National Museum in Warsaw. Scientists were sure that everything they could, they found and dug up there. In principle, there should not have been new discoveries and data about this city. But this did not stop Polish archaeologists. They were able to make a new unique discovery that can make scientists take a fresh look not only at the city itself, but also at the history of the new band church. They unearthed the wall of the apse with the adjoining wall of the brick temple. Among other things, they managed to discover and excavate the dome of the tomb which is located in the very center of the city. The walls of the apse were considered one of the most sacred places of the church, therefore they were decorated with monumental figures in two rows. The diameter of the apse is about 6 meters and the width of the nearby church is about 27 meters. This apse, according to scientists, is the largest that has been discovered in Nubia to date. Scientists suggest that the church they discovered could be a cathedral, next to which a necropolis was built for church dignitaries, most likely for local bishops. However, scientists have a lot of work ahead of them before they can find answers to their questions. Science has no doubt about the realness of Jesus Christ. He left people for heaven, the Orthodox say today, celebrating the Feast of the Ascension of the Lord. If for believers the historicity of Christ is undeniable, then among scientists this causes fierce controversy. In recent years, more and more researchers who are far from religion have declared Jesus really lived in Palestine in the first century. The mythological Jesus theory prevailed for decades. It was especially loved in the Soviet Union, having adopted it as the main instrument of propaganda of state atheism. Dozens of scholars have cited fairly convincing facts that Christ is a figment of the collective imagination. But everything was changed by the find, which the Bedouins drew attention to in the Judean desert. On November day in 1946, the teenager Muhammad ad dib along with his brothers, was looking for a sheep that had strayed from the flock. Usually in such cases, the first thing to do is inspect the nearby caves, which they did. In one of the stones lay a jug. The children, of course, got interested. They looked inside and found pieces of half-rotted parchment, which crumbled at the first attempt to pull it out. It turns out that the hidden inside the manuscript belonged to the Jewish sect of the Essenes, previously unknown to science. But what especially surprised the specialists was that the letters were painfully similar to those of the Gospel. In some places, they were almost repeated verbatim. In 1961, archaeologists unearthed a slab showing that Pontius Pilate, who sentenced the Savior to death, is a real historical figure. Then they found a house of the first century AD with scrolled inscriptions mentioning Jesus and the Apostle Peter. However, scientists have not come across any finds directly related to Jesus. Historians believe this is impossible. How to prove that this or that object belonged to him? Therefore, experts are looking for it in the documents. First of all, written by the hand of those who did not profess Christianity in order to observe the principle of impartiality of research. The first written evidence, according to scientists, appeared only 30-40 years after the death of Christ. 
for a remote Roman province where only 10% of the population knew literacy, the speed is quite phenomenal. We are talking about the Gospel of Mark, one of the four recognized by the church. For a long time it was believed that it was composed in 80 AD. However, recent studies have shown that this happened even earlier, around the 50s. Other Gospels, Matthew, John and Luke, appeared a little later, and surprisingly, they were composed independently of each other. Each evangelism has its own audience, and they are in different languages. However, the information about Jesus in them is generally identical. The Ideal Woman of the Late Paleolithic for a long time, scientists could not say for sure what exactly the Paleolithic Venuses symbolized. The versions were different. It could be talismans bringing good luck, amulets, and even erotic figurines. The most common theory was that these are figurines of the mother goddess, who was worshipped by people of the Paleolithic era. Her image can be traced in all world mythologies. She symbolized procreation and fertility. Recent studies have proven that, after all, Venus depicts what an ideal woman should look like in the eyes of people from the Paleolithic era. Moreover, depending on where the ancient people lived, these ideas were somewhat different. Experts from the University of Colorado have analyzed dozens of Venus and came to the conclusion that the figurines are too realistically carved. Venus are either pregnant or a bees. In their opinion, they cannot simply be symbols of the mother goddess. The oldest figurines are thinner than the later Venus. This is due to the fact that the climate during the late Paleolithic period changed and became colder, and the coldest period began in about 2517 millennia BC. But the Venus of the Paleolithic were not just a temporary amulet. Most likely, they were passed down from generation to generation, from mother to daughter. Many of them have holes, apparently they were worn around their necks as amulets. Fresco depicting the Spider God in November last year, in the north of Peru, archaeologists managed to find a rock fresco that was at least 3,000 years old. But only recently, scientists were able to identify it. In their opinion, this drawing depicting the spider god belonged to one of the peoples of pre-Columbian era, Kupesnik. Scientists have also found that a fresco adorned one of the walls of an ancient adobe temple. On the frescoes, scientists were able to see the image of zoomorphic spider god with a knife in his paw. This creature was considered a deity that was associated with the early cult of rain and fertility. Now traces of yellow, white and grey paint remain on the fresco. However, scientists believe that the original drawing was made with bright and multicolored paints. Ochre was also used. The archaeologists who discovered this fresco are sure that a large complex was once located on this site, but unfortunately, they were late. Farmers used heavy machinery to expand the plantations, and they destroyed a According to scientists, more than 60% of this monument. Now this place is taken under the protection of the authorities and all the necessary actions will be taken to preserve the archaeological site. Whether any action was taken against the farmers is unknown. The most expensive antiques in auction history Saber of Napoleon it didn't matter what kind of battle they had, Bonaparte stuck to his habit of always having a pistol and a saber in his personal arsenal. The latter was made exclusively for Napoleon, so there is only one such exhibit in the world. It is known that at the Battle of Meringo, Bonaparte kept a saber decorated with gold. In 1800, the Austrians were expelled from the Italian lands. This exhibit was, has preserved the echoes of history. It was passed down within the Bonaparte family from generation to generation. In 1978, the saber was recognized as a national treasure of France. About 30 years later, the historic piece was auctioned for $6.5 million. Battle Horn Oliphant the ancient exhibit was made from the elephant ivory. It is decorated with elaborate curved illustrations on the theme of hunting. Today, there are only six examples of such historical value. One elephant was sold for $16.1 million at a Scandinavian auction. Min Gold Tripod 
The tripod made of pure gold belonged to the Min dynasty. This is another exhibit that has managed to reach our time. It was used in the court of Emperor Xuandi, who ruled in 1399. In 2008, the gold tripod was sold for $14.8 million. Tiara inlaid with precious stones the tiara has a distinctive feature, the presence of expensive Colombian emeralds and yellow-green diamonds in its jewelry. The magnificent exhibit belonged to the German princess Katharina Hangel von Donnensmark. The jewelry contains more than 500 carats. The legend says that the stones belong to the Indian Maharaja. The tiara wandered in some hands, then in others, but Guido Hahn von Donnensmark found it and bought it back. However, in 2011, it left the auction for $12.1 million. Silver Tureen of Louis V The Sotheby's auction also sold a silver tureen for $10,287,500. In 1733, it was made personally for Louis V. This item was miraculously able to bypass Remelting. It left the auction in 1996. The final price of the silver tureen was able to far exceed the initial price. Cash of Viking Gold Jewelry Seven bracelets, six gold and one silver, dating from 980, were found on a field in Jutland by treasure hunters known as Team Rainbow Power. The 900 gram find came from the same deposit where the 67 Viking Age gold chain was discovered in 1911, and experts believe it was almost likely part of the same collection. The heaviest precious find of this kind weighed 750 grams. One of the archaeologists involved in the excavation, Nari Augard Larsen, said, We really felt like we found gold at the end of the rainbow when we found the first ring, but when more appeared, it was almost unrealistic. Lars Grandwood, of the Sanders Cup Museum, who was called by a group of amateurs halfway to the opening, said that all this time he had a suspicion that more gems were hidden in the area. The museum has described some of the gold items as being made in the jelly style, a variety associated with the Viking elite. According to Peter Pence, a Viking expert and curator at the Danish National Museum, the bracelets were most likely oath rings. The tribal leaders gave them to their faithful aides. Turing with 300 years of history The bottom is practically absent, the base cannot be restored, but the archaeologist and restorer Roman Prokhorov has already conjured over the rupture of the side part in the workshop of the Central Research Center of the Russian Geographical Society. The details are soldered so that the old pan will definitely not fall apart. The process of conservation turned out to be laborious. The soup terrain corroded and conservation allowed to stop the seemingly irreversible destruction. Traces of corrosion were also found on the lid, but to a much lesser extent. In general, the lid is better preserved. The terrain was created from a tin lead alloy. Tin utensils have been common for quite some time. It replaced lead products. However, lead is toxic. In ancient Rome, for example, they did not know about its poisonous properties and actively used it. As a result, they were poisoned and died. Industrial production of tin started already in the Middle Ages, so there were bowls, plates and spoons made of a tin lead alloy, which no longer threatened health and at the same time was distinguished by its strengths. Declassified gold artifacts in the Tuan Valley of the Kings Back in 2019, dozens of ancient gold jewelry were discovered on the territory of the so-called Valley of the Kings in Tuva, but archaeologists kept information about the find secret. Archaeologists discovered gold objects during excavations of the Tunic One Mount in the Valley of the Kings. Noble Scythians were once buried here. The finds have been identified as a tangible heritage of the nomadic Kokel culture. Among the most significant finds is a rich grave goods found in the grave of a woman who died at the age of 2530. The grave dates back to the period between the 1st and 4th centuries AD. We found the remains of a wooden coffin and 65 golden objects, and in particular a unique spiral made of gold foil which was used for the burial ritual. In addition to gold jewelry, bronze mirrors from China were found in the mound, as well as some other interesting objects. As the head of the archaeological expedition, Timur Sedekov noted, the Kokol culture left behind burial structures of various types, therefore, each new such discovery allows fill in certain scientific gaps. 
Two Vikings met after a thousand years. A large-scale genetic study of the remains of Vikings throughout Europe helped to shed light not only on the ethnic origin of the legendary warriors, but also to find close relatives among them. Employees of the Danish National Museum organized a meeting of two warriors whom geneticists considered to be second-level relatives. A young Viking who died in a battle in Britain and a 50-year-old arthritis resident of the island of Union in Denmark met 1,000 years later in one showcase. DNA mapping of the remains of 442 Vikings throughout Europe, in addition to answering questions about their ethnic origin and directions of migration, revealed relatives among the warriors. In Estonia, in the mass grave of Salme, four brothers were found among the remains of 41 people, and a Viking, buried in a mass grave in Oxford, had a close relative in Denmark. They could be cousins or uncle and a nephew to each other. It is difficult to say whether they could have met during their lifetime, since the level of dated accuracy allows for a deviation of plus or minus 50 years. Archaeologist Janet Werberg, curator of the expedition at the National Museum of Denmark, spoke about the amazing meeting of Vikings who turned out to be the closest relatives. A Danish Viking from Oxford was taken to the Danish Museum to participate in an ex exhibition that will last three years. The warriors, whose genetics proved a second-level kinship connection 1,000 years after the death, were placed side by side in the same showcase. The Book of the Zagreb Mummy The Zagreb linen book is known as the longest text in the Etruscan language from the surviving written monuments of this great culture. The Etruscan dialect had a noticeable influence on the formation of Latin, but unfortunately, languages related to the Etruscan do not exist at the present time. In addition, so few documents of that era have come down to us that it is not possible to completely decipher the text of the book. Scientists were able to translate only a few its fragments. From the currently known content of the Book of the Zagreb Mummy, another name for the artifact, we can conclude that the document is a ritual calendar describing the subtleties of the religious tradition of the Etruscans. The book is dated to the 3rd century BC, so the very fact of its existence is unique. Manuscripts made of cloth, the ruthless time, as a rule, destroys much earlier. One of the reasons why the monuments of Etruscan culture is now available for study is that the material from the book was used to wrap one of the Egyptian mummies. The Zagreb linen book was discovered on a mummy in a tomb near Alexandria in the middle of the 19th century, but scientists for a long time did not pay attention to it, believing that the mysterious writing on the fabric was made by the hand of an Egyptian. And to support our channel and see even more interesting and unusual finds of archaeologists, I recommend that you subscribe to the channel and click on the bell. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone!